University of Bologna. Uh, my field of research uh, uh, related to communication, uh, public communication, but also consumption, uh, cultural studies, uh, and so on, uh, and especially related to food, the food issue. Um, and uh, okay, this uh, afternoon, I would like just to try to um, understand or to uh, delineate with us yeah, I keep it. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is a concept of uh, civic food platforms. Uh, uh, because, okay, intuitively, I think it's quite clear um, what a food platform is uh, um, in the era of uh, platformization of society. Uh, several platforms dedicated uh, to food have recently arisen, of course. However, few of them, I think. Uh, um, have an, a, a true civic attitude and uh, is not exactly clear also what uh, a civic means. Uh, so, um, so this uh, concept, I think, uh, is quite a little bit articulated and I would to start uh, to explore explore this concept starting from the concept of uh, civic food networks uh, that i studied in the past uh, and also the, the 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 concept of civic food platform uh, i'm uh, i proposed this con this uh, this concept this term in uh, 2018 uh, in a contribution for a journal issue dedicated to consumption and in this seminal work, uh, uh, me and my colleagues uh, investigated uh, collaboration uh, uh, and especially trust building processes uh, uh, and, of course, empowerment uh, um, between uh, this uh, civic food network uh, and some digital platform that um, similar, similar to these uh, networks. Uh, um, and we called them uh, civic food platforms, but I recognized uh, the need to better define this concept. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, um, the attributes that characterize them, confronting civic food networks and their counterparts, uh, digital counterparts, the so-called civic food platform. Uh, so I prepared, okay, just some slides, uh, more than 20, sorry, <laughs> um, uh, to share it. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm going uh, to how, how... screen sharing so that you can do ah, Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. Sorry. And I was, I just wanted to be sure that everybody is fine with the recording of the images and the video recording. Okay. Okay, but I think it is. Can you see the the screen and the slide? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, okay, this is my uh, contribution about the uh, first contribution about civic food networks, and this is more or less the index uh, of this um, of this lesson. I uh, organize uh, this speech uh, in the first part uh, about the concept of civic food networks. I think the starting point, the starting point to um, to, to 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 collaborate uh, uh, some dimensions uh, related to uh, also the concept of the civic platform and uh, and that, and another related concept, uh, um, the concept of social innovation uh, to explore how civic food networks uh, may be considered uh, social innovation. In the second part, I introduce uh, uh, the technological innovation uh, and, uh, or of course, uh, the, um, the difference uh, between uh, technological innovation and social innovation. Uh, that's introduce, introduce, just introducing also the concept of sharing economy and food platform. And at the end, uh, the concept of ca platform capitalism and the concept of civic affordances that help us to 
um, explore the characteristic of the platforms. So let's just start with this uh, concept of civic food networks uh, with, with the first part of this speech. Uh, the civic food network, uh, uh, civic food network is a concept uh, um, uh, that uh, was introduced by ranking at all, uh, and they consider it uh, as an overreaching concept to explore contemporary dynamics and sources of innovation within agri-food networks. Uh, more specifically, with this uh, term, renting at all, refer to those initiatives in which citizens play an active role in the initiation and operation of new form of consumer producer relations. So in these terms, uh, it is different and more specific in respect to similar other terms, such as a local food system or alternative food networks or short food uh, supply chain. Uh, but why we need uh, so a different concept? Renting a tool highlights uh, several reasons to justify to the need uh, for a, a new term, enriching it of uh, uh, meanings and features. Mm, first of all, the term civic food networks refers to new relationships that are developing between consumers and producers. And second, uh, refers to a wider networks that, than those narrowly engaged in food production, distribu distribution, and consumption practices, and may also include new forms of cooper cooperation between different local actors. Uh, moreover, civil food networks are an expression of processes of change in the agri-food governance mechanism they often embody different, uh, uh, also also a change of relation, sorry, between urban and rural areas, and they often embody different discourses, new knowledge and new symbolic framework, which are developed and shared through interaction amongst involved actors. Uh, finally, many um, uh, final, finally civic food networks in many cases develop and build upon. Uh, linkages with other new social movements and the conceptual innovation related to different societal and economic sphere, such as uh, the growth uh, movement, transition town movements, uh, and so on. But what is this as a what does actually is a, a civic food network? For example, in Italy, uh, we have a spread diffusion of uh, the solidarity purchasing groups. The first solidarity purchasing group was born uh, by a group of friends in Fidenza, in the north of Italy. Uh, and this group of friends uh, would have access to fresh, healthy and sustainable food, creating a purchasing group, of course. They had a need, a new need, raised by the awareness of increasing food risks for health and environment. environment in a short time, they realized new market conditions, supporting small local sustainable farmers against the big retailers. For this reason, they added the adjective solidarity, or sometimes ethical, to their purchasing group. They were the concrete proof uh, that a different economy model, uh, or a different world was possible, starting from small groups and um, local uh, dimensions. Their example was followed uh, by several other people, and this kind of group soon arisen everywhere in Italy, mostly in the central north. And, and who are these, uh, these, these, uh, these people, the person? Usually people who participate uh, to uh, solidarity purchasing groups are mostly urban citizens defined as a, a reflexive middle class characterized by the middle high income and high educational level. They are inspired also uh, by the idea that small is beautiful. So they prefer uh, small groups with a low level of formalization and uh, a local approach. Local approach to global issues, such as food. Uh, someone has described uh, these groups and their activities uh, as a form of social innovation 
a gym for participation and uh, for participation and civic engagement, uh, mostly in good matter. Uh, uh, in few words, uh, uh, they are described as a, a real utopia. So more in general, the concept of uh, uh, in the related dimensions to civil food network are largely overlapped to the concept of social or civil economy, and of course, to the concept of social innovation. Uh, the same ranting at all, uh, I like the innovative role of civil food networks in the agri-food system, describing them as a locus of experimentation. And indeed, the civil food networks may be considered at the same time as a social innovation and a, a sort of hub of social innovation. So therefore, uh, the concept of social innovation becomes a lens uh, to look at the civic food network concept and their dynamics. Uh, however, this concept of social innovation is not an easy or simple concept, it's uh, quite um, articulated and differentiated. Uh, but uh, Muller et al. Uh, have recently distilled some uh, main characteristic or dimension related to social innovation, especially a new or renewed need of a social group. Uh, second, this group responds to the need of redefining its organization and their social relations. And this renewed asset allows uh, an empowerment of the people in need. And some authors uh, highlight uh, the relevance of a fourth uh, uh, dimension, the cultural one, uh, which is, uh, however, often considered a transversal uh, dimension. So if we consider civic network as a social innovation, we identify that new or emerging needs are those related to healthy and more sustainable uh, food, the need for ethical or responsible production, consumption, and so on. So the people involved are mainly responsible farmers and consumers, uh, which develop, develop their activities in accordance with the normative dimension, uh, which may be summarizing the concept of food as common good. Uh, Food as common good. When we talk about uh, a common good, uh, uh, of course, uh, um, usually refers to a good that is not private and neither public. Uh, the debate uh, is debate about uh, put a so-called commons uh, or common pool resources and the potential way to govern in them emerged, emerged mostly after world the publishing of the famous book of the Nobel Prize, Eleanor Ostrom. But very briefly, uh, to say that food is a common good means to consider, uh, consider the entire food supply chain from production to consumption as something to manage collectively in order to prevent food risk and implement sustainability. These needs are indeed the main lever for collective action in the civic food platform, as well as, well as the incipit for a re reconceptualization of food. Uh, in fact, some of the main cultural or conceptual references related to civil food networks are those of food citizenship, food democracy, and food sovereignty. Very briefly, the term food citizenship was used to emphasize the need to move beyond the food as a commodity and people as consumers. Uh, it highlights the increasing corporate control over food chain and the loss of food skill and awareness within the public. Food democracy is a term, is a term introduced by Tim Lang, who advocated the need to democratize the food system and to look at the food as a locus of democratic processes, essentially calling for a, a, the enhanced role of citizens in food system. And finally, the concept of food sovereignty was instead developed in a bottom-up bottom manner by the international farmers' movement, Via Campesina. And it's quite similar to the food democracy concept, uh, more declined to production side. And the term, the term sovereignty uh, emphasized the right to decide by our own in food matters, thus stressing on localization of democratic choices. An important term uh, also um, 
related uh, with the civil food networks, my opinion is resilience. This term is okay, quite famous, uh, uh, but this term is usually used to indicate the ability of usually a living organism to adapt themselves to environment changes. It is usually a characteristic of, of adaptation. However, in the case of civil food networks, we could consider resilience also as their ability to adequate themselves to a normative, to normative imperatives, thus changing their environment, their social environment. And we can call these uh, characteristics uh, as a social reflexivity, which represent uh, the basis, uh, the basis of collectivation and social innovation, of course. Social reflexivity finds its better expression in organized groups that have the possibility to gain new information confronted in different point of view and arriving to new alternative frame thus elaborating a new uh, form of collective governance. Uh, especially mm, to um, elements of results are particularly important. The creation of a social learning system and uh, uh, the presence of democratic spaces and systems of deliberation and decision making. So this assumption have led the redefinition of the local food governance beyond the limited actors of the food sector and even beyond the mere state slash market regulation dichotomy embracing a multi-stakeholder approach and establish what renting at all uh, call a civil society led governance the main outcomes of this governance should be the empowerment of people involved mostly consumers uh, and the farmers and from this point of view, we have already seen how, in the case of solidarity purchasing groups, the main needs they faced at the beginning were to supply fresh, healthy, and sustainable food for consumer. And doing so, they have sustained the small farmers against the power of corporation and big retailers. So thanks to their activities, the purchasing groups have ensured an empowerment for themselves as consumers. Uh, as well as toward small and sustainable farmers. But exactly which kind of empowerment can define different kind of empowerment? Uh, an economic empowerment, of course, gaining an economic value, but also political empowerment, redefining the initially unbalancing relations of power in the market, and a social and psychological empowerment, strengthening social relations and sense of belonging. So for this point of view, to say the truth, uh, uh, recently uh, some critics are also rise in this contest, pointing out the increasing asymmetry uh, of power, in some cases between farmers and group of consumers, especially in favor of the consumers, uh, urban consumers accused to have a paternalistic approach towards uh, farmers. Uh, however, I think it's, quite clear that sometimes of empowerment does exist in this kind of networks, even if it is probably more and more blurred proportional to the, their formalization and institutionalization. However, just to conclude this first part about civil food networks, I tried to, uh, to sketch a scheme, a sort of, uh, of a scheme or a model referred uh, to the civic food networks in which I have tried to synthesize some of the main already cited dimension. Uh, so uh, considering food as a common good, the three main concepts of food citizenship, food democracy, and food sovereignty may be linked with other three related but differentiated dimension and some corresponding variables. The first dimension, mostly related to the concept of Food citizenship is awareness and reflexivity, which is expressed by cultural capital, including a reflexive form of cultural capital improved by a cognitive engagement in food matters. 
the second dimension more directly, more directly related to food democracy is a relational a relationship or in participation. This is expressed by social capital and decision making processes. Especially, we may distinguish here a structural social capital that is uh, that represents the structure and dimension of the network and correspond more or less uh, to a bridging social capital, mostly based on weak ties. A relational social capital that, that represents the quality of relations and it is the bonding social capital based on trust and strong ties. And finally, a cognitive social capital related to the sense of belonging, the sense of community. Uh, third, uh, the third dimension related uh, to the concept of food sovereignty is collaboration and territorialization. It expresses a civic engagement, mostly related to collective action and aims at establish something like a collaborative food governance the civil society-led governance of, of renting at all at the local level, as well as uh, to ensure an empowerment of the people involved. So this uh, uh, scheme allow us to consider some and probably the main useful dimension variables to investigate civic food platforms. However, how we could uh, adapt, the question is how we could adapt this model or scheme to something like a civic food platform. So to respond to this question, we have to firstly highlight the role of technology in social innovation, thus the role of digital technology in food exchanges and their potentiality for a civic engagement and a collective food problem. So this is the initial part of the second uh, part of uh, um, speech. Uh, um, and in general, when we uh, talk about technological um, innovation, um, we have to know that technology has been always considered a lever no? for innovation. However, this option, as often uh, implied a mere economic development, development with several negative uh, social implications. Uh, to Marx, uh, for, uh, for example, uh, technological innovation was just a synonymous uh, uh, of renewed production means and renewed power of capitalism. Similarly, from a Weberian point of view, we can see technological development as a means uh, of rationalization of, or a form of rationalization of social dynamics, which could conduct without any kind of uh, social reflexivity on technology, uh, to conduct to a sort of renewed technological cage, no? similar to the iron cage uh, of Weber. This is just to say that uh, each technological innovation have always also social implication and often can lead social innovation, but this relation cannot be taken for granted. So we need to consider both the technological innovation, their social implication, and of course, related social responses and dynamics. Nowadays, we are facing, of course, a new technological revolution, the digital revolution. And this affect, as well as uh, uh, all the previous technological revolution, of course, almost all dimensions of our everyday life in positive and negative terms. Rainey and Wellman, for example, using the metaphor of the computer operating system, have described this change as the rising of a new social operating system. Especially, they consider three uh, main uh, um, revolution: no? the revolution, social network revolution, uh, internet revolution, and mobile uh, uh, revolution of the mobile devices. And according to Rennie 
uh, Rainy and Wellman working as a real new operating system, these three revolutions have uh, allowed us to redesign our relations and our life according to our wishes and objectives. In few words, and this is also the main, uh, um, the main thesis of the authors, they are lever, lever for empowerment. This early frame about uh, the freedom of the internet, the potentiality of empowerment of the social web has been more and more overpassed by increasing critics that are summarized in the concept, in concepts such as platform capitalism and platformization of society, which could be described as a sort of colonization of the digital sphere by economic and rationalized logics. So the discourse on digitalization is now polarized between empowerment and exploitation. Moreover, we have to look at the specific role of digital mediation in social relation. For example, how, how it impacts uh, trust building processes. Considering digital economy and especially the so-called sharing economy, which is characterized by um, by exchanges among strangers, most of the authors highlight how trust is mainly related to the rating apparatus. It is indeed probably the fastest and best way to evaluate products and people in a wide market of several strangers. However, this system represents a process-based trust, in which trust is the result of a process mediated by an algorithm. And this is exactly the risk underpinned by the so-called platformization thesis or theory, which underline how the main social processes are currently flattening towards a platform logic largely based on, based on algorithm and governed through a restricted group of infrastructures owned by few uh, big companies. So if we see trust under this light, in my opinion, uh, we are very close to something like the Weberian iron cage, uh, surely very close to a high risk of social control. Differently, in the case of civic food networks, uh, we talk instead about uh, active trust, which is a trust actively built upon by people through their relationship. Active trust this is a concept uh, introduced by Anthony Giddens. Active trust is strictly related to social reflexivity, which is established when we improve a relationship, creating a public sphere of confrontation, a social learning system to improve cognitive engagement and reframing abilities, as well as, well as spaces for the liberation and system of collective decision making. So we have to, to develop uh, a uh, sort of apparatus of analysis that allow to recognize and evaluate the differences in values, approaches, relations, knowledge and awareness, empowerment and so on, especially considering the specific role of technology and the consequences of a technological mediation. So a first step, uh, searching for our concept of civic food platforms, um, is to, 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 to take into consideration uh, an important field of studies that, uh, that is directly involved in uh, digital mediation, no? also in food sector. Uh, this, uh, this field is... Uh, um, it's clearly uh, related to the already cited sharing economy. And what is a sharing economy? Uh, but, uh, okay, okay, from uh, a mere economic point of view, sharing economy may be defined, defined as uh, a two-sided or multi-sided market. And this is, uh, a situ this, uh, these are situations uh, in which a subject enables two or more groups to interact with each other and the more nectar growing the more the entire nectar benefit 
However, the term, the term sharing economy uh, is usually considered uh, as an, an umbrella term, uh, initially used, used with a large enthusiasm to indicate a sort of new economic model or a series of models mediated by digital platform explicitly designed to relate, uh, to link different internet users facilitating exchanges among them. Indeed, uh, a lot of different models of exchange and categorization about the sharing economy does exist. We can see in this slide also some of them, a product service system, redistribution markets, collaborative lifestyle, or selling, sharing, crowdsourcing, recirculation of wood, uh, and so on. However, in my opinion, uh, probably uh, a more simple, simple, uh, simpler, uh, simpler, and for our purposes, uh, probably more useful categorization distinguishes uh, sharing economy models on the basis of a matrix that identify, uh, you can see uh, in this, uh, um, this slide, uh, in a matrix uh, uh, that identify two main variables, uh, platform orientation and, uh, uh, and type of provider. Platform orientation uh, with uh, two uh, different uh, uh, values, profit, non-profit, a type of provider, with, uh, no, sorry, a type of provider with two different uh, values, profit and non-profit, and platform orientation a distinguish between a peer to peer and uh, business to peer models. So, searching for uh, our civic food platforms, we should consider all those experiences mediated by digital platforms, which are related to food in a specific normative way. The one that considers food as a common good and I'm at developing an alternative governance of the food supply chain and the empowerment of people involved. Often, only the nonprofit dimension is seen in line with a non-economic social approach to consumption, uh, which emphasizes the switch from ownership to assets and which sees a sharing of resources as part of a post and anti-capitalist development. Conversely, for profit approach is considered closer to platform capitalism and the dark side of the sharing economy. Uh, however, in my opinion, uh, nowadays it's difficult to trace uh, a clear red line uh, because uh, also in the case of the traditional civic food networks, some organizations have turned, to, have turned towards a form a for profit asset or a mix and also several traditional for-profit organizations have now a strong social responsibility orientation. For instance, a lot of cooperatives. So at the moment that we consider both for-profit and non-for-profit platform, trying to assess their proper pro-social and collaborative orientation. In the same manner, we also consider peer-to-peer -peer and business-to-peer platform. The first one, mostly as a form of collaborative consumption in which the protagonist is a so-called prosumers. While in the case of business-to-peer platform, we could better talk about a collaborative economy, a model in which the role of consumers and producer are less blurred, but they collaborate each other in form of co-production. Just to put on the plate uh, some example, we should consider uh, those uh, nonprofit platform that allow peer-to-peer -peer exchange of food surplus. An example could be food sharing. Its aim is uh, to reduce food waste for environmental and ethical, thus collective uh, altruistic reason. A similar business-to-peer platform is, for instance, too good to go. And we should consider also those for profit plat for profit business to peer platform that similarly to the already cited uh, civic food 
sorry, uh, recited uh, solidarity purchasing groups allow the matching between ethical local farmers and responsible consumers, improving the short and local food supply chain. A wide range of similar platforms are recently rising, and to say the truth, uh, not very different to a mere commerce, but it is okay, in my opinion, because, uh, uh, because our focus is not on sharing and sharing economy, but on the civic dimension uh, of the new digital economy. So, uh, some of them are explicitly um, inspired by the uh, solidarity purchasing group, referring to their same value and preferring local and sustainable farmers, thus improving local agroecology and the well-being of local community. Like some examples are Calulu, Buono, Local to You, or Italian um, platform. This kind of uh, platform-based food networks may be surely considered as uh, the counterpart of the social innovation represented by the civic food network. And surely they are able to enlarge the audience of potential beneficiaries. However, often they cover just a piece of the supply chain. So it is necessary to consider the entire ecosystem of user platform or all the means used to cover the entire food supply chain from, pro from production to consumption pay attention to the already mentioned critics. In fact, here, the true point is about democratization of platforms, increasing the possibility of participation and decision-making, thus having a role in the governance of the platform and through it a role in redefinition of local food governance. So from this point of view, we can distinguish between a strong and a weak approach. So not to, uh, between for profit, no profit, but probably is, for, is or useful to distinguish between a strong uh, and a weak approach to participation and collaboration. Uh, a strong approach uh, uh, is that of the so-called platform cooperativism, for example, that correspond more or less to these, uh, uh, the, 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 the frame or the box one and, uh, and two uh, in this uh, table. Uh, so related to a strong approach to participation and collaboration. Um, in fact, cooperativism was uh, indeed a social movement, uh, which may be considered as an example of social innovation, rise against the worst consequences of the first capitalism. So against the, the worst consequences of the platform capitalism uh, seems quite normal to propose something like a platform cooperativism, no? which is a, this platform Cooperativism is primarily based on digital technology, for obviously for what concerns its business model, but calling for a change in property and governance mechanism of the platforms. Especially property and governance have to be redefined in cooperative terms, guaranteeing not only the production of value, but also its sharing among users. And we add, it could ensure a local food governance based on the empowerment of people involved. Um, in some cases, also specific technologies of management and governance are uh, proposed as solution to the problem of collective governance and to overcome the problem of trust among strangers. And this point about uh, uh, tools, instruments, uh, or how to use um, digital technology to, um, 
to 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 uh, to, to overpass uh, the 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 problem this problem um introduce us to another point and another concept um uh, related to how digital technologies impact on organizational aspect of the collective actions. This uh, concept is uh, the concept of affordances. Very briefly, uh, in relation to the digital technologies and social platform, the concept of affordances can be defined as uh, the possible actions that the properties of medium make available to users. In our context, a specific type of affordances is particularly interesting. Organization, this concept is uh, that of organizational affordances. Organizational affordances focus on how individuals interpret affordances to achieve organizational goals and the coordinated action to support them. So the concept of organizational affordances allow us to focus our attention on how digital platforms or digital instruments, tools, are used to organize collective action. Uh, okay, to say the truth, <laughs> I prefer the term civic uh, uh, affordances, which are those affordances that could be defined as those affordances that facilitate the organization of collective actions and for civic objectives. So within a civic framework. Through the concept of civic affordances, and some of the main dimensions and variables already considered for the civic food networks, we could try to investigate also civic food platforms, or better, in which extent food platforms could have a civic value, civic attitude. So this is a, a, a scheme, a model that I have uh, um, uh, realize uh, on the basis of the previous uh, scheme uh, just to um, to highlight uh, how to, uh, to to think or to conceptualize the all the different um, dimensions already uh, considered and in the case of uh, uh, case of a platform uh, so at the center uh, we have the platform, of course, uh, primarily identified with the structural social capital, uh, namely with the network and the potential social ties it could activate. It is directly related with the economic empowerment of people, of course, because uh, the more, the more, um, the more structural capital growing, the more uh, market growing. In the case of um, sharing economy, for example, in the case of a, a digital platform, so this is a, a direct link uh, with the economic empowerment of people. But this is a characteristic of all, almost all uh, platform in sharing, so-called sharing economies, and for. Uh, it's different uh, types of, of platform and model. And on the left, the left side, we have a participation, a social learning system, because we have to consider um, how this platform uh, could be considered as a civic, uh, how people can participate within this uh, kind of this exchanges this kind of platform um, the uh, participation uh, participation and social learning systems uh, are directly related with the cultural capital of course and reflexive form of knowledge and awareness uh, and the cognitive empowerment Cognitive empowerment is thus the result of the system. 
as well as, well as the opportunity for social relation and social and psychological empowerment. On the right, instead, we find instruments for governance uh, and decision-making processes, which are um, which are um, uh, yes, these uh, these uh, tools are um, um, are fed are fed by uh, cognitive empowerment, of course, and are needed for a political empowerment. Political empowerment uh, is also obviously related to an economic empowerment. So this is a just a uh, proposal, um, and uh, uh, this is just a scheme that would uh, just to suggest how to investigate the civic affordances of the platform, um, namely the ways in which users or citizens users uh, use platforms and in general digital technology to organize collective action in food matter. And which kind of variables or dimensions we have to consider in order to evaluate the result of the collective action collective action, mostly in terms of empowerment. Um, yes, in this, in the, in this uh, other uh, slide, uh, I've just reported uh, some useful, uh, useful variables um, that I've already used to try to evaluate uh, some of this dimension, the cited dimensions, such as the social capital and empowerment in both civic food networks and platforms, for example, considering total, total numbers of users for structural social capital, and, uh, and the difference between the total number of subscribers and active users uh, as a proxy for example, of relational social capital, of uh, active users, uh, and, uh, and so on. And furthermore, in the table on, on the right, you can see an example uh, of some dimension you could consider evaluating organizational affordances for collective action, alias the civic uh, affordances. Uh, for instance, for instance, which, instruments are used for the circulation of information or how users use digital technologies to connect each other to create social learning system or to improve decision making. Uh, obviously, in some cases, uh, um, instruments, uh, this instrument of management, information, deliberation, decision making uh, process, etc., uh, could be vertically integrated within the, the same platform. More often, instead, they represent a mix of different tools used by users to create something like an online movement or something similar. These are all aspects to investigate in order to define a food platform as a civic platform. For instance, uh, uh, solidarity purchasing groups uh, have their proper online uh, management tools. You can see on the, the left side. Uh, so you, we, we can see if it works, could you try to connect uh, to, no, to, to, to internet. Okay, so we can see, for example, page this um, this is a, a, a website similar to uh, Wikipedia, and in this page uh, you can see some uh, um, different kind of uh, um, of software. No, sorry, here of software used by the purchasing, the solidarity purchasing groups uh, to manage their exchanges online. And um, 
we can see uh, which uh, which of this software have also a uh, possibility for uh, share information or feedback uh, or other similar uh, or other similar tools that could be considered as a civic um, civic tools uh, or in terms of civic affordances uh, organizational affordances so that, that is a uh, um, uh, organizational affordances for collective action or if i can uh find my my slides i don't know how i know how i have to 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 uh, how to close this uh this page yes we can see your slide actually stefano we we cannot see ah. the internet page i don't know why no ah, okay so, yeah, why. but i can't see uh my slide but don't worry i try to open it again uh, let's click here here okay probably here okay um perfect okay so uh did this uh, or other different uh, um for example uh this is uh, the page uh, the of um um too good to go uh too good to go and uh, uh local to you for example they use uh, um certification um certification such as uh, the, this benefit corporate um to ensure their civic attitude uh, or something like that but in some cases uh, also, the case of to go, to go uh, it have also a specific uh, um, a part uh, section of their website dedicated to something like a movement. They try to organize and to improve movement, and also a lot of uh, community um, or. Uh, Yes, a lot of community groups uh, um, does exist uh, uh, about sharing food or about uh, uh, this kind uh, of topics in which people uh, can, of course, uh, um, share their opinion or uh, skills or uh, um, suggestions about uh, uh, food waste uh, reduction uh, or, or other uh, topics so uh, to come just to conclude uh, another important thing to evaluate is the my opinion is the resulting local food governance because i think could be interesting to evaluate if uh, it be a sort of structural result related to the mere use of digital platform or something mostly related to the movement dynamics. In any way to investigate the role of digital technologies in the local food governance, uh, I think is an essential point. It highlight the link between because it highlights the link between uh, online and offline. Uh, the continuum no? uh, or between online and offline, uh, online participation and local food governance, the concrete uh, organization uh, of the supply chain, the uh, concrete uh, management of the supply chain. And it's, in my opinion, it's quite important to try to distinguish if uh, or in which extent this is a, a result uh, of a mere, mere intermediation of a technological platform or the result of um, a civic attitude of this platform. So the result of participation uh, um, of, of users uh, within this uh, uh this kind of others okay so i finished
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stefano. It was really interesting. Thank you, too. Yeah, also this um, transposition to food, talking about the platform ecosystems was really interesting. I, I have um, just a comment. I was just thinking when you yeah. introduced the civic food networks, you talked about the importance of the social aspect of it, right? So it, uh, his birth, the birth of civic food networks was really spontaneous from a really small group. And um, so I was wondering when the discussion, as you said, moves on the uh, digital uh, world, so more talking about platforms, dynamics, et cetera. Um, can we say that there is this kind of dual uh, aspect where from one side platform uh, allows for a, a spreading of the network, a, also a community participation and active participation and uh, as you said, the uh, platform cooperativism. But on the other side, um, what, what about also the uh, technological distance between uh, those who are the customer, co the cooperative customers of the platform. In that sense, maybe the social aspects uh, is a bit uh, downsided or... What? No, yeah, yes, it's, it's true. Uh, I recognize uh, these um, this aspects also in our seminar work uh, about uh, uh, trust building processes, etc. And we call we have called um, this uh, process or this aspect uh, as uh, a sort of uh, routinization uh, of participation or something like that. Yes, yeah, so routinization uh, because uh, participation that is mostly face to face in civic food networks uh, and very informal uh, small groups uh, etc um, turn in uh, something different uh, uh, mediated by um, by digital technology by algorithms by systems uh, technical apparatus uh, technological apparatus that uh, uh, that, that, that uh, Mm, impose a distance between people uh, so uh, this uh, this is a, a thing that mm, um, have a, a, a sort of I don't know uh, improvement in uh, the dimension uh, of the structural social capital the dimension of the network and uh, of course uh, of the impact also for example um uh, uh food supply chain uh have a, 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 is sustain is more sustainable um local local and short food supply chain is more sustainable than a global food supply chain so a uh, means that uh, help to improve uh, um uh, these exchanges uh, of food for example but also of other uh, other goods uh, at a local level surely improve us improve uh, sustainable sustainability of course uh, and uh, also uh, and also an economic empowerment uh, for example of lo local community Surely, but probably we uh, we lost something uh, as a social capital. We lost in social capital or in, in a relation relationship, and uh, um, and we have to to evaluate if uh, uh, technological tools. Uh, are able to to realize something similar uh, for example a virtual community of course uh, in some extent uh, can realize uh, something as something like a social capital um, but in which extent uh, this is uh, also 
to, to we need to investigate also these aspects and what what, what changed hmm, between uh, uh, small groups uh, former however um, however uh, uh, if we mm, reasoning in terms of uh, uh, organizational affordances uh, for example um, we we have to consider also how technology help to um, to redefine community for example redefine or help to organize uh, collective action also in small groups so these are all uh, uh, all, all aspects that we have to consider. For example, if we see here, sorry, here, there's a list of uh, um, organizational affordances that you you could consider to investigate uh, um, uh, to investigate uh, uh, the organization of collective action uh, through uh, digital technology. We find, for example, adapting rules of process and making decision or the, the structuring the community, structuring the structuring the community. Uh, that is how uh, digital technologies are used to organize uh, a, a community, uh, big, uh, big, great community, big uh, with several uh, people uh, in small groups uh, to organize some uh, specific uh, uh, actions uh, uh, something like that. and uh, also we can say that uh, um, of course uh, we, we we probably uh, talk about uh, local level mostly local level so uh, our relation uh, or sort of uh, face-to-face uh, -face, uh, relation or uh, back and forth uh, between online and offline is, uh, is uh, always possible probably and this help to uh, strengthen the uh, social capital. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. So we also have uh, ah, okay, there is Rossella saying that if it's possible to have a copy of the slides, but I don't know, Stefan, if you just thought about it. Yes, I think, yes, that's no okay. problem. We can share it uh, via email and we can uh, okay. to the participants. And I don't know if anybody else has any comments, reflections or questions about the discussed issues or just some hints or ideas okay we have a question on the chat so benedetta asks can this type of network community help spread a culture and awareness of food in food desert areas that don't have access to the same resources as urban areas She's asking. Uh, this is also that's an interesting yeah. uh, question. Um, Thank okay. you, we have, uh, of course, uh, a problem uh, uh, related to the um, uh, so called digital divide, for example. Uh, and uh, we have to consider in which extent uh, this problem is. Uh, uh, Spread in different uh, at a different level in different way between, for example, rural areas and urban areas. Of course, um, the same participants to the purchasing solidarity purchasing groups are considered uh, people uh, with a high level of um, uh, level of income and uh, urbanized. Uh, uh, they are citizen, urban citizens. Uh, uh, we have high level of income and um, and educational, no, in, in the high educational level. Uh, so uh, often there's an asymmetry between uh, um, this kind of people and their uh, resources and the resources that we can find 
in the rural areas. Um, nowadays, I think that we can find the new, the new generations also in rural areas have, um, have to, to, to re-equilibrate this, uh, uh, this uh, difference, these differences, uh, these differences. Um, however, they sure <laughs> they exist, and we have to consider the, this uh, this situation. Mm, however, uh, I think that we have to 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 see also uh, to the um, to the empowerment. Of course, not term the magic term is empowerment. We have to consider how, uh, for example urban uh, citizens uh, that have a high level of education and probably uh, are, uh, less problem with uh, digital from a digital divide point of view uh, how they can help for example uh, also uh, farmers so uh, the countryside the people that are living in the countryside that have could have a lot of problem about the digital technologies uh, related to educational level, but also to infrastructure uh, or something like that. Uh, but the, the, the emphasis is uh, uh, on how uh, citizens, urban, mostly urban citizens, can help and collaborate with um farmers in rural areas to empower them so in general it is possible you have to consider each uh, situation situation each situation that is different from another okay i, I hope that benedetta is satisfied with this answer but i think it was really satisfying <laughs> Okay, so if I don't know, Stefano, if you wanted to add anything more, no, no, thanks, uh, thanks to all for the attention. Uh, um, this is a, a work in progress, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. Yeah, sure. Also, with COVID nineteen, everything got kind of a an explosion, you know. Yes, yeah, some of these um, platforms uh, also uh, normal normal platforms uh, such as uh, local to you uh, that are very similar uh, to e-commerce uh, at, at the a local level. Uh, they, they 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 said that during uh, the the lockdown they have an in, in, incredible increase uh, uh, in the cell. So, so <laughs> of course, uh, COVID 19, uh, I, I like uh, the persistence of uh, a digital divide, but I've also had. For, from another point of view, to to to, to improve uh, these uh, kind of instruments. Yeah, sure, absolutely. Okay, I I think that all comment. Okay, Kalpesh, you have a comment, please. Thank you. Yeah, so I just have a question, slightly a little different from what you have discussed. So the question is how does the platforms even the net net networks shapes the way in which people change their food habits how important is this question and when it comes to the platform and the way in which platform uh, circulates and distributes this food and so how uh, platform yeah so the my question is for instance the how the culture of food food habits is changing with the advent of platform or, or, or I, I would put, uh, put it differently, like for instance, how the supply and demand of particular foods are changing with the advent of food, like platform. Ah, um, which kind of demand or? For instance, I'll say the example from India. For instance, now there is a trend for organ organic farming and organic products, right? Yeah, yes, of course. So, 
now uh, even there are intermediaries like the contractors and uh, the companies they will come and they will finance uh, some farmers that okay you produce these products and they will sell it to those contractors and then they will they are going to sell it to the consumers right so there are this intermediaries right? so and they are going to tell you what you should be producing so i so i mean to say like if when these platforms are coming into the picture like what change does it make to this thing? in uh, in the civic food network for example they are also uh, they are uh, always all are um, organic farmers and um, uh, citizens that are involved in these groups searching for organic products of course that may be uh, um, certified as organic or um, or exist something like uh, 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 warranty systems, okay, social warranty systems, uh, because of the, the strong relationship they have trust uh, in this kind of uh, farmers and their uh, the, the, their production, the, their uh, means uh, and ways of production. Uh, so they don't need, uh, for example, certification, uh, etc. Uh, the relationship is uh, mostly direct. Uh, they have no intermediaries uh, or, or very few intermediaries. Um, in the case of um, platform platform is exactly mostly the, the only uh, um, intermediary between uh, farmers and producers um, and they they use uh, uh, um, they use a strategy strategies uh, of trust building process uh, of trust building uh, trust building <laughs> strategies um, mostly uh, in, in direct you know, such as uh, um, certification uh, so organic uh, uh, certification or uh, certification as a benefit corporate uh, mostly certification of social responsibility. Uh, this is because uh, uh, it's uh, difficult to build uh, this uh, a strong, uh, mm, stronger uh, relation no? uh, based on trust, uh, etc. Uh, through uh, through digital platforms. Uh, or digital uh, tools, uh, but mm, it, it is not. Uh, in some cases, it could be possible because, for example, also the civic food networks uh, um, uses they, they use uh, digital tools, uh, and, and of course, uh, uh, even more in this uh, in this period, uh, previous period uh, during the COVID nineteen, etc. They have to use uh, different digital uh, instruments. Uh, um, so the inter interesting point is uh, what what what, uh, what change in trust building processes, uh, etc. In this shift toward direct formal group, etc. And digital uh, platform. I mean, it's not. Uh, uh, so easy to, to investigate yeah. uh, um, this, this kind of uh, problematic. Uh, but this is also the same uh, problem that we face uh, in the institutionalization of these groups uh, because recently they are, they are more and more formal and they participate to uh, Biggest structures such as a, a network of networks, uh, and also in this case, uh, it's not uh, easy uh, to maintain 
um, this kind of, of uh, informal processes, uh, active, active trust, uh, and something like that. Okay. Okay, perfect. So um, I don't know if there are any more comments or questions, or we are satisfied with, yeah, it was an interesting discussion after the okay. presentation, really. Um, I take this opportunity, so before saying goodbye, to um, have a, just a look at the summer school program for everybody. So I guess you can see my screen. So tomorrow we'll have uh, Cornelia Hahn with a um, presentation on the paradox production of privacy by platform economies. And then we'll have uh, Professor Gillette Sarasen with Professor uh, Jamutek from the Nikolaus Copernicus uh, University talking about uh, how is cashlessness formed, so from micro to macro sociological levels of institutional work. And then we'll have the honor to host Chris Bale from Duke University with uh, his presentation on perceived gender and political persuasion. So this is a social media field experiment during the 2020 Democratic National uh, Primary. So I- Thank you again. Oh. Thank you, Stefano, a lot really for your, for your presentation. Okay, and see you the next uh, uh, <laughs> appointment. Uh, we will see during the summer school for the next sure. adventure. Okay. See. Yeah. Thanks to all participants, really, for your participation. And we'll see you tomorrow for those who are interested. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.